Hello class, I hope everything is going well for all of you. Um, this week we're going to talk a little bit more about visual rhetoric. Today specifically we're going to talk a bit about advertising and how words and visual elements come together to help form or produce meaning for the audience. So before we get into the visual aspect, I want you to consider the following advertising slogan or catchphrase. That slogan is, it's the real thing. Okay, so it's the real thing. Now, if I were to ask you what you thought the most important word within that slogan was, what would it be? I've done this experiment many times in classes in person, you know, pre pandemic life. And without fail, the majority of the class always says it is the word real. I agree with that actually very much so. And I think it's because that word has so many other words that are associated with it and that can sort of provide a whole host of associated meanings with the word real. So just for an for example, real has associations with the following terms. It's either synonymous for or closely linked to the following. Authentic, original, natural, factual, tangible, historical, genuine, sincere, true, material, honest, and pure. I'm sure there are more, but these give you a good idea of the kind of associations that the word real has attached to it. Now, these are all sentiments or associations with which advertisers can play to sort of make associations with their product by using the word real. Now, it's the real thing is actually a slogan from, or that is associated with the brand Coca-Cola. Um, and it was used in the 70s up until I believe like really early 80s. Um, and they use this in a variety of print and even television or filmic, um, advertisements. Um, it was also used in some radio ads. They had like a jingle that came with it. So I'm going to show you a few of the print advertisements right now. Um, I'm just going to sort of flash them across the screen at you. Um, and I really want you to take a good look at them and get a sense of how the Coca-Cola brand or those who are doing the advertising for a Coca-Cola brand are utilizing some of these associated words um, to sort of create this idea about this product for their um, customers or those to whom they are advertising the product. And, you know, another thing here to consider as you're looking through these ads, as I flash them at you, um, consider who is the audience. Um, a lot of times based on the sort of imagery or the associations that are being made, you might be able to guess who the intended audience is is for particular um, advertisements. You know, companies tend to diversify their ads to try and target certain markets, right? So they probably won't produce the same kind of ad for um, a blue collar male worker as they would for a more elite woman, right? Um, or, you know, there could be a whole host of different things that can sort of play into, you know, they're probably going to have a different kind of ad for somebody who's older than for um, a subgroup that's younger, right? So um, you can kind of see how some of these ads are produced and sort of have an understanding of who or what audiences they might be trying to reach with the kinds of words and the kinds of images that they use in these particular ads. So I'm gonna bring up a couple and just sort of 
bring them up for a minute to talk a little bit about um, uh, some particulars about how this sort of idea of association um, with the words and images is played upon within some of these particular ads. So for example, several of the ads um, incorporate natural settings or elements in the ads. Um, and so clearly here, they're trying to play with the word real and its association probably to nature or the word natural, right? Um, you'll notice that there's just like a Coke bottle with a leaf next to it or a Coke bottle sitting in like just a little stream of water, a Coke bottle sitting in grass, um, Coke bottle with some fern leaves behind it. Um, so clearly in these particular ads, um, like I say, they were sort of using that nature element or the nature visuals, the things that we see in the ad um, to promote this idea of the naturalness of this product. Now, is Coke really natural or not? Mm, probably not so much. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to try and play upon that element of the real thing as much as they can. Now this is probably a pretty good and arguably smart association to try to make for the advertiser um, with a consumable good, something that's going into our body, right? Um, because people tend to feel better about putting things in their body if they feel like they're natural, right? Now whether or not that's a founded <laughs> principle, right? There are obviously things like poisonous berries that are natural that you can't eat. But we tend to think as humans, natural is better when it comes to things that we're consuming. So really, this is a good um, advertising ploy for the folks at Coca-Cola because it brings together um, this element or these elements that try and reach out to um, an audience that is probably going to be more conscientious about the kinds of things that they're putting into their body. So that association with Coca-Cola, the real thing, to Coca-Cola, the nat natural thing, right, is kind of implied there, okay? So in another instance here, we see where Coca-Cola is using real people doing everyday things, um, such as spending time on a hobby, right? I flashed before you <laughs> and will again in a moment if I haven't already, um, a, an advertisement in which a young man is playing his guitar. So there's um, this um, picture of Coca-Cola sitting in ice. Then there's like this little box where a man is like sitting there strumming his guitar. And um, over the top of it, it reads, real life calls for real tastes for the taste of your life, Coca-Cola, right? So whatever your hobby, whatever you regular human are doing with your life, Coca-Cola is gonna be the taste of your life, right? It'll fit in with whatever you're doing. So clearly this is meant to sort of appeal to what they consider an everyday sort of person, right? Um, arguably, it's probably someone middle class, someone's playing a guitar, they probably have some free time on their hands or um, some disposable income that they can afford an instrument, right? So all of these visual elements sort of come together to inform the kind of messaging they're trying to get out, the kind of consumer they're trying to reach. Now, this same sort of mentality can kind of be seen in the following non-print advertisement. So I, I'm going to be playing a clip here. It's about 30 seconds long um, from a Coca-Cola television ad um, from the same time frame with the same slogan. Um, I'm going to put that right here. It's a real thing. Coke is. That's the way it should be. Now notice again, in this advertisement, we see a montage of people um, that are sort of a variety of real everyday people, right? They're sort of pictured um, from white collar to blue collar settings. We have a taxi driver. We have a man in a suit who's probably got a white collar job and he's sitting at a diner drinking a Coke with his lunch, presumably. Um, and 
Um, so we see a woman who's sitting at a typewriter, probably at a secretarial sort of job or administrative sort of position. Um, so they're really trying to put it into our heads that Coca-Cola is um, a consumable for your everyday sort of middle class, presumably American um, individual. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this particular, I'm gonna put it up here, this particular ad. Um, we see this version of the ad where there's a bottle of Coca-Cola and a glass of the Coca-Cola that sits among uh, grapes, a couple of apples, and some cheese, all on a charcuterie board. Or charcuterie? Charcuterie? Charcuterie. I don't know. Pronunciation is not my jam, clearly. Um, <laughs> but um, this ad is interesting in that I think it's more playing off of the associations with originality or genuineness and authenticity um, in this part particular um, ad and maybe even materiality to a certain degree. Um, be these sorts of words are often associated with um, purchasing of high-end um, materials, goods, uh, etc. right? Um, and honestly, there's like the natural element too in that like these are, you know, obviously fruits of the earth and then cheese of animals, like whatever. But these particular kinds of fruits and the way that they're displayed here on the charcuterie, 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 charcuterie board, whatever, um, it has associations with um, more high-end, refined, there's like a classist tone here, right? Um, the audience is probably presumably more affluent um, and um, the symbols here are kind of associated with an upper class party. You could almost see this spread um, being uh, laid out and given to people at like a nice fancy party and whatever, right? So um, those are the sort of fruits and the kind of things that you would expect to see laid out at a, like a really fancy, you know, high end upper class party or something, right? This is kind of the association they're making here. And you kind of notice that even in the way that it's laid out, like if we were to take out the Coca-Cola bottle and the glass of Coke, you could almost, you could almost seamlessly throw down a, an expensive bottle of wine and a wine glass and the ad would still totally make sense right for because it's the sort of audience that they're going for here right where it has those same sort of associations so the implication here in this particular ad seems to be more that coca-cola is or can be just ref as refined or even um just as luxurious a um refreshment for a high-end party as a a bottle of wine, right? Um, but Coke's ads have um, used imagery to sort of get across to certain audiences and sort of uh, provide um, symbolic reference for the audience for many, many years. So I'm gonna cons put up here some ads from uh, the 50s and 60s era for you to consider, okay? Um, I'm just going to sort of pop them in through here. Again, just take notice of sort of who is in these ads, sort of how they're being presented, um, and what the messaging tends to be. Who do you think the audience is for these particular advertisements, for example? And um, what does it say about the people that they're trying to reach through these advertisements? So I would argue here that, again, we're seeing a lot of sort of 19, obviously these are from the 1950s, but you get these like housewife vibes from a lot of the advertisements that feature young women, right? They're white, arguably middle class um, women who appear in several of these ads. Um, we can tell that they're probably housewives because there's a lot of 
um, emphasis on home in these ads. For example, one of these first ones that I put up, uh, the package that gets a welcome at home and she's holding up a six pack of glass Coca-Cola bottles, right? So this is a pack that when she brings this home to her husband and maybe her children or whatever, this is a welcome product in their home, right? Um, it even adds some additional text on that particular ad. Ice cold Coca-Cola has made the pause that refreshes a family affair. With a six bottle carton so easy to take home, you can always have Coca-Cola ice cold in your refrigerator with an easy reach of your thirst. So here again, there's this like, there's this focus on home and you bring this home. Well, who does the shopping in the 1950s era? probably the women, right? Uh, whose um, sphere was, you know, the home. They took care of everything at home and took care of the kids and they cooked and cleaned and, you know, the home was their, the place where they were sort of supposed to be from a cultural and socio-economic socio, um, standpoint, right? Men, men took care of their women and whatever. Now, things have changed a lot since then, but that was sort of the idyllic, and I not to say that that was what everyone was doing at that time, but that was sort of the idyllic um, kind of idea about what a middle-class white life was supposed to be like, right? Women take care of their men and the children and the home and whatever. Um, and then I'll show you a couple of these other ads, for example, um, there is an example of a woman pulling a little cart and it says, he's coming home tomorrow. If he's coming home, this is probably a war era, um, kind of advertisement, right? Your husband's sort of in the military. He's probably coming home on leave, for example, or maybe he's a traveling salesman and he's coming home tomorrow. So this housewife probably needs to make sure that her, you know, refrigerator is stocked up with that Coca-Cola for her man, right? <laughs> um, we can also see um, in a couple of the advertisements, women carrying service trays with Coca-Cola on them or sitting near um, trays of food and things like that. So um, it comes very clear that Coca-Cola is attempting to make it seem like this is a drink for when you entertain people or when you're, or something that you serve to others, right? Um, so there's one in particular where there's a woman sitting next to a plate of like meat, looks like meats and cheeses and whatnot, um, appetizers, <laughs> a couple of bottles of Coke sitting next to her and she's sitting there with it, right? So she's clearly at some, you know, party, um, it looks like it's definitely in a home, right? There's one where a woman has, um, her sons are playing, it looks like piano and um, guitar, or maybe her husband and son, the, the guy on the piano, I'm not sure how old he is, so. But either way, um, this mother um, appears to be serving, you know, Coca-Cola, um, and it even says, serving Coke serves hospitality, right? So to be a good hostess, you better make sure that you have some Coke there to give people, right? Um, there's another where a woman is shopping in the store, right? Again, another implication that women are the primary audience for these kinds of targeted ads, right? Um, she's picking up a six pack of Coca-Cola and it says, designed for hospitality. Good hospitality is the knack of putting everyone at ease, including the hostess. With ice cold Coca-Cola, you have that knack. It's so easy to slip your fingertips into the handle of a six bottle carton. Thus, it's so easy to keep your refrigerator supplies that supplied at all times. So here we get again, that idea that the a woman should be having these in her house. So that way when she is, um, you know, hosting other people in her home, then that is an option that she can give them um, for a refreshment, right? Now, there are a couple of other ads in here that feature men. Now, I want to take note here. I said that the advertisements around women have a lot to do with being in the home or their role as, you know, hostess um, and, you know, serving in ho for hospitality sort of um, situations, right? 
Now, the two ads that I've added here for men, there's one where um, the man looks like he is in the service in the army of, or something similar. Um, and it says, thirst asks nothing more. Yes, sir. Everybody knows ice cold Coca-Cola is delicious and refreshing. Okay. So even this man who goes to war, well, our country asks a lot of you, Coca-Cola doesn't ask anything. It's just there for you. Right. So here, this is clearly a male who is probably more of the um, intended audience here. Now, this happens again. There's another, it looks like a uh, white collar kind of guy in a suit. He looks like he's handing someone a Coca-Cola. Um, he also has one for himself. Um, he's outside the home. It almost looks like he's maybe on a college campus or uh, maybe somewhere where there's like an advertising firm or something. Although I, I think it looks more like a campus, especially with the trees there and things. Um, so here, uh, but he wants to bring you with him. Here, join me, have a Coke with me, right? Uh, but again, this is outside the home, right? Now, the other interesting thing here, I'm gonna put up the two male advertisements. The other thing that's really interesting here is these men aren't in stores buying Coca-Cola. They're not in shops buying Coca-Cola. They're not being served Coca-Cola in their homes by their women, right? <laughs> or whatever. Um, instead, both of these have um, outside Coca-Cola containers. So in one with the servicemen, uh, it looks like a cooler sort of situation where he'd probably get that at a bar or something like that. And the other, uh, the man who looks like he might be on a college campus, um, the Coca-Cola, uh, there's a, dis a, a dispenser or a, um, a vending machine, right? So these are advertisements for men who might get stuck outside of home where their wife isn't going to be there magically with a service tray to give them their Coca-Cola, right? So men need to know they can go to their <laughs> local bar or whatever, or to the local vending machine to get their Coca-Cola when <sighs> their wife is not there, right? <laughs> so clearly you can see that um, advertising utilizes the visual image, right? So, um, and they construct these things in very particular ways to try and reach particular audiences with particular messages about their products. And um, they're, they're very well put together and very well thought out most of the time to ensure that those who they're trying to reach with their marketing are reached and those who they want buying their products are then in, hopefully for them, more likely to purchase their products. Um, so the reality though, is that these associations between image and words go far beyond even, um, advertising, right? This is probably the most obvious place to see it in some ways because, um, advertisements, um, you know, we know we're being sold something usually in an advertisement, right? Um, it seems pretty clear, but sometimes what we're being sold is not exactly what we think, right? And sometimes the way that they um, advertise things to us, it's in ways to manipulate us subtly into thinking certain things <laughs> about their product and things like that. So um, particularly when we're talking about how they use those associations, right? So real is associated with natural and with authentic and with you know these other kinds of words that um, have further meaning, particularly when they are found with other particular symbols or words, etc. right? So um, keep that in mind as we're going through our visual um, unit here, because your next paper, you're going to be looking at stereotypes and how those are constructed in a visual manner, right? And how those visuals um, are supposed to sort of suggest certain things to us uh, when we see people who fit or seemingly fit those stereotypes. Because again, stereotypes are problematic in that they often um, force us to, well, they don't force us, but what tends to happen with stereotypes is we tend to make assumptions about people that aren't necessarily true. Um, and it can lead to um, making assumptions that are harmful to groups of people. Um, so, so we have to be careful about 
um, this, but sometimes if we understand sort of how what we're seeing informs um, how we're thinking, then we can sort of dismantle those um, sort of associations that we have to sort of critically think more about um, whether or not these ideas that we have in our head about what we see are real, if that makes sense. <laughs> so anyways, um, I hope this was helpful. Um, I have information about your next paper up, so make sure you watch the video lecture that I have in the assignment folder about that. Um, and we will come together soon, I'm sure, for more video lectures. <laughs> all right, I will see you all soon.